Hey everybody and welcome back to Fly Time Tuesday. Brady coming at you with a Lucky Charm. This is an awesome little fly developed on the North Platte River in Wyoming. There's a fun little story about it on umquafeathermerchants.com. You can find the details there um, about how it was developed and, and a little story about some, some success with it as well. So check that out, but let's go ahead and get one spun. All right, so we got our finished Lucky Charm sitting in our vise here. Let's get a new one going. This is tied on a Tiemco hook. It's the 226BL, size 14 I'm tying today. It's a nice, it's a light wire hook, which is good for this emerger pattern. Uh, and then it also has that up eye on there, which is a, a great feature of this hook as well. We're gonna start out with some UTC 70 denier in black. And I'm gonna start that towards the midsection of this fly and then walk on back and lock everything in place. And then we'll go right into the first material and this material is a substitution. And it's just because I didn't have the original material. It's a Hemingway material at the time. And so I adapted it um, and got this Kylie's Nymph skin to work fairly well to achieve a similar fly or, or basically the same fly or the same, visually the same fly. I'm gonna trim a nice little tie-in point for it. And then I'll be able to grab it and secure it against the shank here. Spin my thread a little bit more so it jumps backwards on it and grabs it. There we are. And then I'm gonna walk back over top of it and I wanna keep it laying flat as I go. I don't want it to curl or anything on me at this point. We'll walk on down the bend a little ways and then take our thread up back. And we're gonna try and create a nice smooth underbody here that's gonna help us wrap the backing over the body. And just walk back down. And up one more time, working out a little bit of a taper, building some slight bulk to this fly. Nice juicy caddis bug. Great fly to have throughout the summer months, kind of late spring into summer, as you start to see some caddis activity around. One thing you can do if you're running into some thread frays, you can kind of come up just as if you were gonna create a dubbing loop and lock that in place. And then you can come in and clip out that extra material there. That just helps you get to a nice clean piece of tying thread again if you hit your, your hook point or whatever I did there that caused that thread to fray. So now I'm gonna half hitch at least a bead's distance back behind this fly. We're gonna rest that bead a little ways back so we want to accommodate for that. And then instead of just tying this material forward like you would on like a latex caddis or something, I'm actually gonna spin it up real good and twist it. And the material will kind of bite in on itself. It, it almost wants to sort of grab onto itself. So you get a nice tight bounded spun up here. And then we can bring that forward. So this first wrap can be the trickiest, but if you give it a nice tight snug as you bring it around, snug wrap as you bring it around, you can get that to lay down fairly easily there like so. And then we're just gonna continue to walk forward, trying to keep some touching wraps on this. Because it is a curved hook, it always wants to sort of separate on the top end. And I really don't mind that too much on this fly. You can see I have a little bit of gappage, but I think it really just adds a bit of depth to the pattern overall. And then as you go, you can sort of loosen your wraps slightly and that's gonna to help to create a little bit of that taper again. Once we get up to the front here, we're gonna capture that off and make sure we secure it down. We don't want this coming loose on us, bouncing loose on us. With a few locking wraps there, and then I can trim that out. And move on to the next step, which is going to be a little bit of ice dubbing. And today I have a little bit of peacock black. 
So I'm gonna take a little bit of my dubbing wax here, coat my thread, and then I always also tend to put a little bit on my fingers while I'm tying. So dry in Colorado helps get a nice tactile grip. And a pretty small noodle overall. We don't need too much material here. This is sort of helping the transition. This is what the bead's gonna rest up against once we lock that down and in place. So kind of a transition piece here. It's also gonna help, again, just snug that bead up against it here. We'll add a little bit more, pull that forward slightly. We wanna leave two or three hook eyes in front of the bead and that'll allow us enough room to tie in our partridge. So now what we're gonna do is pull that bead back right up against that eye step, snugged up against that eye step. And then I'm gonna come right over the top of it and in front of it there. And then a couple of quick securing wraps to keep that from moving. And then I always like to sort of maneuver it rearward push it back really good and then wrap back on it. And that's just gonna help lock it down. And again, keep it from moving around on you. From there, we can tie in our partridge feather. If you, if you are gonna tie soft tackles, definitely look into buying a full skin. You can get packs of partridge, but those packs just tend to be, you don't get all of the feathers that you really need. There's a lot of waste in there. So having a nice skin is definitely the, the right way to go. Um, and we're gonna find what would be our appropriate size. I know from experience, um, you know, tying size 14s and whatnot, sort of in this range on my skin is gonna be the right size. You can always take those feathers up and kind of see how far out they're gonna be off of the back. And then if it is too long, you can sort of account for that on the front end of the fly. There's a method of tying in the partridge first, if it is too long, or if you're going down quite a bit smaller. But for this fly, just a regular feather is gonna do. So I went ahead and cleared all of the feathers down below, all of the kind of duffy, done sort of feathers. And then I'm just gonna grab it by the tip and work all of that backwards. And that'll give us a nice clean tie-in point to attach this feather so it'll look like so. And we're gonna tie it in right by the tip here. And when you're tying it in, you wanna avoid grabbing it right at the bare stem, right there like that, because it's gonna be a little bit more brittle. But if you grab more of that feather, that's gonna hold in place a little bit better, a little bit more material to bite into. And we'll clip out a little bit of extra there. And again, sort of just keep a smooth thread base, as even as we can. And I'll half hitch right behind the eye. It's a cool little fly. It's a great fly if you uh, want to get into some trout spay. It's a perfect little bug for a Scandi style setup, fishing emergers. It's also awesome off of an indicator um, or can be the trailing bug on your Euro rig, depending on if you do your point fly on the bottom or more of a traditional lead fly. You can incorporate this emerger into your rig so that it's a little bit higher up in the column comparatively. And all I'm doing now is as I'm wrapping everything, I'm just pulling everything rearward here and going around with touching wraps right in front of that bead. Bead helps to sort of flare the material outward. And I'm gonna wrap it all the way up to bare stem. This isn't a soft hackle that you're only gonna do one wrap on like you would if you were doing like a traditional spider style soft tackle. This one has a bit of a full all encompassing look to it. And then once I have that stem ready to be secured here, all of those barbels going backwards, 
We'll take my thread up and around it. And then we can lock it in place in front as well. Clip out our extra stem there. Use my micro tip scissors for that. And then give it a nice little clean whip finish here. Yeah, a good little swing bug. So a fun pattern to tie and an even more enjoyable pattern to fish. If you haven't ever gotten a fish to take a fly on the swing on that tight line, I encourage you to give it a try because that is almost like a streamer take that you might get. Just that nice strong eat can be a really exciting moment in fly fishing. So but yeah, there's our finished lucky charm. Well, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Fun little soft tackle, great for on the swing and a lot of different applications, uh, but a good one to tie. If you did enjoy it, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Subscribe for more videos like it, and then check out the description for the material list so that you can tie one of these for yourself. Have fun tying.